Hey, this is Jerry from Blizz Studio. And in this particular demo, we're going to set up character movement in Playmaker for a puzzle game. Also included is a nice little tip to reset your camera. So if you're ready to get started, let's go. Okay, so here we're back in Unity. And I've kind of set up this nice little environment that could be something of a puzzle game. So what I did was I just used extremely simple shapes. So all of these kind of mountains that are in the background are just cubes. All of this, these kind of clouds are just uh, spheres. And then I imported some candy cane uh, 3D models and just put a wrapped a texture around it. So, and then with the puzzle environment itself, I just, again, used a plane. So this is the, the back part. And then inside of the plane, I just used cubes that I just squished down. And then I also imported a 2D character, which you can use 2D inside of a 3D game. And then just another cube that I had as a base for the character to sit on. So here we go. This is the environment that, that I want to use for this game. Now in this particular demo, I'm gonna go ahead and just show character movement on a puzzle board. And you can use this for all kinds of different types of games and all kinds of different types of mechanics. But we're gonna go ahead and just keep this simple. I know that I wanna set my camera up to look just a little bit different than what I have it set up for right now. So you can see that my puzzle board is kind of small. I'm kind of seeing more of the horizon than I necessarily want to see. I'm seeing a little bit in front of all these spheres. And that's not necessarily the camera view that I want to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just close all of these game objects. And what I want to do is I kind of want to range how I want this scene to look. Here in the, in the scene view, and kind of get that to look the way I want want it to. And then the cool thing is I can go ahead and select my camera and then if you hold down the command or control if you're on a PC, command shift F, you snap the camera to the view that you have in the scene. So that's a nice little trick that you can use. And if that doesn't work again, you can just kind of rearrange and command shift F again. Of course, that's not necessarily right either but you can keep playing around with this until you get exactly the right camera that you're looking for. And of course we can always change the field of view if we needed to zoom in or zoom out um, accordingly. So, all right, so that's a nice little trick. Okay, cool. So we've got that set up and I just don't have exactly where I want it to be. There, okay. So the thing that I wanna do is I wanna move this 2D character around this 3D board, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I have my character with the little cube attached to it, and I wanna go ahead and add an FSM. So I'm gonna go ahead and, in my Playmaker FSM window, I'm gonna go ahead and add an FSM, and I'm gonna call this player movement. And I'm also gonna label the FSM that as well, because I might potentially add other FSMs to this. And if we have multiple FSMs, we need to know which one is which, okay? All right, I'm also gonna call this player movement here as well. In the state, cool. So we have that set up, now let's go ahead and get the player movement to work. All right, so how am I gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and use my up, down, left, right arrow keys. I can also use the WASD keys. And what I'm gonna do is to use a get key down. So if you just, in your Playmaker actions, you can just type in get key down or just get key and that'll pop up. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that and bring that down in. So what I'm gonna do is if I wanna move the player back, I wanna use the up key. If I wanna move it towards me, I wanna use the down key left and right, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and input this real quick. Okay, so I have that. So let's go ahead and go to an events. I need to also add an event in here. Let's go ahead and call this move back. We'll add another one called move forward, called move left, and add one more on move right. Cool, so we have those in there. So let's go ahead and set those up. So send event, I can go ahead and in this case, uh, we'll just go ahead and the up key will be moved back and it's saying, hey, you don't have a transition set up for that. So let's go ahead and add a transition. And then I'm gonna just copy and paste this real quick. 
And we'll do the same thing with the down arrow key, and that's gonna be move forward. And then we'll do the left key, and we'll have that move left. And then the right key, and we'll have that also be move right. Cool. All right, so we have that set up. So let's go ahead and actually make these transitions go to another state. So easy way to do that is just hold down the command key or control key and drag out and then we'll create a new state. So here we'll have move back, we'll have move forward, have this move left and move right. So I'm gonna have this move forward down here, just kind of range these a little bit nicer maybe. So they're kind of where they are logically, I guess. Okay, so let's go ahead and just relabel these states real quick. So this one is move left. This one is move back. This one will be move right. And then this last one will be move forward. Okay, so we have our transition set up in our states. So let's go ahead and also add a transition to finished. So if we've finished moving the character, we wanna go back and listen to the keys again. So let's go ahead and just set up finished transitions here. And we'll have these all go back to the add transition of finished, go back to the main player movement. Okay, so we have that set up. Now, the thing that I wanna do is what happens if we move forward? Well, there's a couple different ways we can set that. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose set position. And it's saying, hey, what do you wanna do with the, the position of the character? Well, if I'm moving it forward, it's gonna be in a negative direction. And of course, I have each of these tiles set up to be 0.5 apart. So I know that I wanna move in the Z axis by negative five or negative 0.5. Okay, so, oops, I want that to be negative 0.5. All right, so we have that set up. So let's go ahead and give this a test real quick. So if I hit my down arrow key, it's going to go set my position by negative 0.5 and then go back to listen again. So it does that, that works. But if we hit down again, my character isn't moving. The reason for that is here, I'm using set position. Set position is like finite. It's set it to 0.5 or negative 0.5 and like that's a hard coded position. So we don't really wanna do it this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete set position. So what the first thing that we're gonna do is to set up a couple of variables. So we're gonna set up a variable for the Z, Z position. We're also gonna set up a variable for the X position, okay? So we're gonna keep track of these numbers. So what we're gonna do is to do a new variable of Z position. And we're gonna go ahead and leave this as a float because we want that 0.5 um, to be able to be in there. If it was an integer, it'd be a, have to be a whole number. We're not using whole numbers for the position here. So um, currently the position of my character is at zero and zero and the X and the Z. So we want that to be set. We also wanna go ahead and add another float variable for the X position. Okay, so both of those are currently set at zero. So instead of doing a set position, what we can do is we can go ahead and float add. Okay, so we're gonna do a float add and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add to that Z position before we set position. Okay, so float variable, we have in there X position and Z position. So we're gonna go ahead and add to that Z position negative 0.5. Okay, so that's gonna add to this variable that we set up over here, but we're not using it just yet. So now we wanna go ahead and do the set position. Set position. And now what we're gonna do, instead of hard coding what this number is, we're gonna update it based off of the variable, Z position. So if we update that variable, we're also going to update the position of the character here. So let's give that a test real quick. 
So we hit, hit the down key. We're moving by 0.5, which is perfect. Let's do it again. Yes, that actually works. Now the problem is that we can continually hit down and down our characters off our board. So we don't want that. So the thing that we want to look at is we want to do a compare, a float compare. Okay, so what I want to do is to add two more events. So what I want to do is to check the float to see if it's more than negative one. If it's less than, I want to allow the player to continue to move. Okay, so in between the move forward and our player movement, I want to go ahead and add one more state. So let's go and do a new state. And here is I want to compare to see what the float values are. Okay, so we're gonna call this uh, float compare. And then we can also type in float compare up here. And we'll drop that in. So here in our float compare, we're gonna set up our Z position. And then we wanna compare it to what? We wanna compare it to negative one because that's the max that the player can move right here. So negative one. And we're gonna leave the tolerance as zero so if the player is, or, so if our position is negative one, we want to stop movement. We don't want our continue our we don't want our character to continue to move. Okay, so we're going to add two events here. So I'm going to add one for continue move, and I'm going to add another one for stop movement. Okay, so I have those two set up. So what we want to do is if our number is equal to negative one, we want to stop movement. We don't want to continue to move. So we're going to do stop movement. And then uh, if it's uh, less than, we want it to stop movement. So less than negative one is negative 1.5, negative two, so on and so forth. So we want to stop movement if it's less than in that case, so stop movement. If it's greater than, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.1, or 0.5, 0, 1, 2, 3, we want, it, we want to be able to continue to move. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do continue movement. And we want that position to be negative one. So if Z equals negative one, then we want to stop movement. If it's less than negative one, so negative 1.5, negative two, so on and so forth, we want to stop movement. If it's greater than negative one, then we want to be able to continue to move. So let's go ahead and give this a test real quick to see if that works. So that works. So we can go to our variables right here. We can see our position is negative 0.5. So that's greater than negative one. So we should be able to continue to move, which we can. Now we're at a position of negative one. And this is what we have. If we're equal or less than, we want to stop movement. So let's test it and we cannot move anymore. Cool. So we need to do the exact same thing except opposite for the move back. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to move these out of the way. We want to do another float compare. So I'm going to copy and paste that real quick. This float compare. So this is going to be the move back. So we're going to go to our float compare. Then from stop movement we're going to go back to player movement if we want to continue to move we're going to go to move back just kind of rearrange these just a little bit here real quick and if move back is finished it's going to go back to player movement now here we're going to need to change the values though so if our z position is one because we're moving back which is a positive direction we want to if it's equal to one, we want to stop movement. If it's less than one, we want to continue to move. If it's greater than, we want to stop movement. Okay, so we're going to use just a little bit different combination here. And of course, before I can test this real quick, I have to actually set up my move back. So let's go ahead and copy the float add and set position over to our move back. And then in the float add, instead of doing a negative 0.5, we want to do a positive 0.5. So I'm just going to delete the minus there and set position should be exactly the same okay so let's give this a test real quick so move back move back and then now i can't move back any further but i should be able to move all the way forward and then i'm stopped moving forward so this is a cool way to set up limits to allow our character to just stay within a confined area
Okay, so let's go ahead and do this real quick for the left and the right. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use this float compare, paste this over here above our move left. So move left, we're going to go to the float compare, stop movement, we're going back to player movement, continue movement, we're going to the move left. And then we also need to just copy over our float add stuff. Here in our float add, we're instead of doing Z position, we're going to do our X position. So if X, if we can move, we're going to move in a negative X position, which is to the left. And we're going to set the owner position. We're not setting the Z in the left. We're setting the X. So we'll change this to none. And then the X, we're setting the X position. And then we also need to change the float compare here. So if it's negative, stop, stop, and continue, that works. And then I'm also going to duplicate this one more time. And this is going to be for our move right. So our stop movement is going to go back to player movement. Our continue move is going to move right. And then I'm going to go ahead and because I know our move back is positive values, I'm going to go ahead and use this float compare instead. So we're going to stop if it equals one. We're going to move if it is less than one. And we're going to stop if it's greater than one. And then here we also want to do the float add and set position. And again, we're changing these to our X position instead of our Z position. Same thing here. Instead of setting the Z position, we're setting the X position. Okay, so hopefully this should work the way we want it to. Nope, oh, nope, it's not working. Okay, so we did something wrong here with our, oh, I didn't put anything in my move. Let's go ahead and add to my move here. Just going to copy everything out of the forward movement because those are negative directions. Let's see, Z position, we're going to do X position, negative 5, and we're going to set the X position of our character. So let's give that a test real quick. Oh, I don't have my float compare set up just right. Forward and backwards are right. Okay, so we need to check something here real quick. Okay, so our float compare, oh, Z position, that's why. So I need to check my X position on both my left and right so instead of Z. Hopefully that'll work. Yep. Nope. Okay, so I need to check the, oops, this is not X position, this is Z position. This is the left. Yeah, there we go. So now I can't move past those two positions. Same thing with the back. And now we've got a nice little character movement within this 3D space. And there you go. So just as a recap, we have getting our key down. Now I can continue to use more keys if I want to. I can check for WASD as well as the arrow keys here. When I'm moving down or forward, so to me, I'm comparing my float. So let's go ahead and pause this. I'm comparing my float in the Z axis, so forward and backward. If it's less than or equal, we're gonna stop the movement if it's greater than negative one, then we're going to continue to movement. And then we're going to continue to move here. We're going to add to our Z position. And then we're also going to set the position of the character based off the Z position. And then we're doing the same thing with the left, right, up and down. So there we go. Hey, another great tutorial in Unity with Playmaker. And we covered player movement. So we can move the character forward, backward, left, and right. And again, if you like these tutorials, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there, and then please share these tutorials. Until next time, peace.